So 8.3 is a pretty key section. We're going to be looking at multiplying binomials, and these rules are going to be using a lot going forward, so this is a good one to know by memory. Uh, several ways to find the product of two binomials, including models, algebra, and tiles, and those are all sort of related. One way that we can find the product of two binomials, binomials is to use an area model like the one we see below here. So if I show 2x plus 1 times x plus 2, if I write that in terms of tiles, again, 2x plus 1 I have across the top, x plus 2 I have down the side. If I'm finding the area of each of those tiles, so x times x is x squared, we see another x squared, and also x times 1 would give you x for an area. I see that when I combine all of these tiles, I have 2x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's, and 2 left over from doing 1, uh, sorry, 1 times 1. So I can rewrite that product, 2x plus uh, plus 1 times x plus 2. I can rewrite that with the area of all those tiles, which is 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. So all of those parts put together. We can also use the distributive property if we want to find the property of two binomials. This one we don't use as often, but it's a way that we could rewrite this. So if I'm trying to find the product of x minus 6 and 4x plus 3 in a simpler form, so in standard form, uh, what I could look at is taking the first term and multiplying times that entire second, uh, second part, so x times 4x plus 3, and also taking your second term, minus 6, multiply that by the second part of the product also. So if I distribute, x times 4x is 4x squared, x times 3 is 3x, and also have a negative 6 times 4x, so that's negative 24x, and negative 6 times 3, so negative 18. And one more step, if I'm trying to write this in simpler form, is I should be able to combine my like terms. So since these terms both have an x as a variable, 3x minus 24x, I should end up, end up with uh, minus 28, or sorry, minus 21x. So altogether, that would be 4x squared minus 21x minus 18. And we don't use that uh, as often, uh, but something else I can use, uh, when I use the distributed property of multiplied binomials, we multiply each term of the first binomial by each term of the second. So a table can help us organize our work. And a table is what we're going to be using a little bit more often. So a simpler form of 3x plus 1 times x plus 4, again, those two binomials. If we're using a table for that, it doesn't really matter which one we write out on which side, but if I take 3x plus 1 and I want to multiply that by x plus 4, if I look just like in that first example of all of those areas, 3x times x would make that 3x squared in the first box. 1 times x would be x in the upper right. 3x times 4 gives us 12x, and 1 times 4 gives us 4 in the bottom right corner. And last thing we want to do, just like that last question, is combine any like terms. And if I look at these two boxes, I have a 12x and an x, which I should be able to combine since those are like terms with x in them. And that would make that a 13x. So I have 3x squared still plus 13x if I combine those like terms, plus that 4 as a constant. So there's also a shortcut we can use to multiply those two binomials. If I consider the product that we uh, can look at down below, 2x plus 2 and x plus 3, the rectangles can model that, so I can divide that rectangle into those smaller pieces. So just like what we found before, we could look at that as individual areas, or I could combine that kind of like our last table. 2x times x gives you 2x squared, uh, 2 times x gives you 2x, 3 times 2x gives you 6x, and 2 times 3 gives you 6. So another way to look at that is by writing them all out. So again, in each uh, tile, I had the length times the width. So I have those four groupings listed out here. 2x times x, 2x times 3, 2 times x, and 2 times 3. And if I simplify, again, this is just where finding each product, I simplify each result. And then, just like from before, I can add those like terms together. So I get 6x plus 2x to make 8x. So the area of the rectangle is the product of one term of 2x plus 2 and one term of x plus 3. So if I want to illustrate that using a little bit faster method, uh, we can find the product by finding the sum of the products of the first terms, the outside terms, the inside terms, and then the last terms. So if I combine those as an acronym, F-O-I-L, that gives you the FOIL method uh, that we can use in order to multiply those together pretty quickly. So if I want to use the FOIL method, again, looking at my two binomials, 3x minus 4 and x plus 2, I wrote out each parts of the FOIL method uh, first. 
So first two terms, so that's the first term of this binomial and the first term of your other binomial, is 3x and x, so I multiply those together. The outside terms is the very first number and the very last term that we see. So 3x times 2 are your outside terms. Your inside terms are kind of like how they're described. They're inside if we put that binomial together. So negative 4 and x is what I can multiply for the inside terms. And your last two terms are negative 4 and 2. It's the last of each binomial. So if I multiply all those together, just like what we did up above with our areas, I get 3x squared, 6x, minus 4x, and minus 8. And you also want to look for like terms before we finish. So 6x minus 2x, if I combine those, or sorry, 6x minus 4x, gives us 2x, and I still have my 3x squared and my minus 8. So that would be my simpler form of that product. So using that FOIL method again, again, the first terms are n and 4n, so I multiply those together. Uh, outside terms, n times negative 7, so that would be n times negative 7. Inside terms, I have negative 6 times 4n, negative 6 times 4n. And with our last terms, we have negative 6 times negative 7. So if I simplify all of those uh, products, n times 4n gives us 4n squared. n times negative 7 is negative 7n. Uh, negative 6 times 4n is negative 24n. And for our last terms, negative 6 times negative 7, negative times negative makes that a positive 42. And before we finish, just got to check for any like terms. So negative 7n minus 24n is going to give us a minus 31n, and we still also have the 4n squared and the 42. So I didn't list out all my steps for that last one, but if you're kind of checking your work, we're using the same steps. 2p squared times 2p for your first term should give us 4p to the third. For your outside terms, four, uh, 2p squared times negative 5 should give you negative 10p squared. Inside terms, 3 times 2p, that should be 6p. And for your last terms, 3 times negative 5, that should give you negative 15. There actually aren't any uh, like terms here because I have all different exponents. So that would be my final answer if I'm writing that in simpler form. Uh, if we want to find a uh, surface area from this of a cylinder, uh, we're not going to have to remember this formula, but if I assume that the surface area of a cylinder is going to use this formula, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi rh, where r is the radius and h is the height, we're given those two in terms of expressions with the radius of x plus 2 and the height of x plus 4. And again, we want to take that and write that in standard form, so that means we got to write that simply. So first thing I can do is I can substitute. If I know the radius is x plus 2, I can go into that formula and replace the r with x plus 2. And same thing with your height. If I know that's x plus 4, I can go into my h and I can substitute x plus 4. So my second term actually had the radius and the height substituted. So uh, if I'm looking to simplify that, that means I need to simplify x plus 2 squared, which really just means I'm doing x plus 2 times x plus 2. And a lot of times when I'm doing work in class, I'm going to be using the table. So x plus 2, x plus 2, if I want to multiply those. Again, we're just looking for what would go in each box. x times x would be x squared. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times x again is still 2x. And last box is 2 times 2, so that should give you 4. If I combine those like terms, that first product should be x squared plus 4x plus 4. So I simplified that on the next step. Instead of having x plus 2 squared, we found those after multiplication was going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4. If I do the same steps with our second pair that we're multiplying, this time we're multiplying x plus 2 and x plus 4. I did that work along the side here. So again, taking those binomials, writing them out along the sides and multiplying, we get x squared, 2x, 4x, and 8 after multiplying those uh, pairs. And again, I have like terms, so if I combine the 4x and the 2x, I should have a 6x in the middle. And uh, by replacing that, now I've gotten a step closer to writing that in standard form. And if I have 2 pi on the outside of parentheses for both of these, that means I could factor out 2 pi in the entire equation. And now I can just put uh, whatever's left, I can take those and add them together. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 4, that was my first part. But we also had x squared plus 6x plus 8, from your second product. And now if I just look for like terms, x squared and x squared makes 2x squared, 4x plus 6x is 10x, and 4 plus 8 would give you 12. And we, since we still had that 2 pi in front, last step here is just to take that and distribute. So 2 pi times my first term gives me 4 pi x squared, times the second term I get 20 pi x, uh, x, and 2 pi times 12 would just give us 24 pi to finish. 
So you can also use the FOIL method when I multiply two binomials, but it's not helpful if I'm taking a trinomial and a binomial. So a trinomial, again, would be three terms just like this a trinomial we had in the last question. In this case, we can use the vertical method to distribute each term. So we kind of multiply these like we were multiplying uh, when we are first getting used to multi-digit multiplication back in elementary school. So if I take uh, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, that's my trinomial, and I want to multiply it by a binomial, x minus 3. If I write that vertically, so trinomial first and binomial second, now I can multiply just like how we first multiplied uh, back when we are, again, learning how to do multiple digits. If I do negative 3 times 1, that's negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3x is a 9x. Again, negative times negative made that a positive. Uh, negative 3 times 2x squared was negative 6x squared. So that's my first result. And then again, skipping a space before we start our next term, x times 1 would be x. I want to line that up with the x from the last answer. x times negative 3x should be negative 3x squared. And x times 2x squared should be 2x to the third. And now that I have those like terms lined up, all I have to do is add them together. So negative 3, I have nothing to add. That's just going to stay a negative 3. 9x plus x is going to be 10x. And negative 6x squared minus 3x squared should give you negative 9x squared. And we also have that 2x to the third in the front that had nothing to combine with. So that would be my simpler form, my standard form of this product by using my vertical method. And last question here is kind of a conceptual thing if we're just looking at the distributive property. So if I want to, instead of using my vertical u, uh, vertical rule, use my distribution to solve that last question, this would just be pretty much the same steps that we're doing with binomials, except this time we have more to distribute. If I take that first trinomial, i got to distribute each uh, part, so 2x squared times x, 2x squared times negative 3. Uh, moving on to my next term, I'd have to do negative 3x times x and negative 3x times negative 3, so I have those two terms in there. And for my last terms, I have 1 times x, so that's just x, and 1 times negative 3, so that would be negative 3. And final steps here would just be to simplify each product. So I multiplied those all together and left that as my next step. And then just look for any like terms. If I have negative 6x squared and negative 3x squared, that was negative 9x squared, and 9x plus x gives you 10x. So we got the same answer that we got from earlier, multiplying that same trinomial and binomial. So most times in class, I'll be using the vertical method, but distribution is also an option if you'd like to do that. So make sure you also answer the questions in the workbook, see how well you did on this, and come into class with any questions you want to ask.